Building a model of 1777 French hunting musket. Part 5. Lock work and shooting accessories. William Hovey Smith, 2020. I'm an author, and I've done mostly outdoor books, but I do have a significant business book for the times, and that is Create Your Own Job Security. In this book, I advocate that you start your own businesses wherever you are, at any age, at any time, when you need to raise a little money, like perhaps right now, and this book tells you exactly how to select the appropriate business. This gun is being built with connection of my novel, screenplay, and movie project, Father of the Grooms, where one of my characters, Fred, is going to take this gun on a boar hunt in Sicily, but before the movie is done, I will have hunted with it here in the U.S. This is Hovey Smith, the Backyard Sportsman. Today we're continuing with our conversion of a model 1777 69 caliber smooth bore French musket to a hunting gun. Now this is a replica from David Peter Solly. And to date, uh, we have shortened the barrel, we have refinished the stock, we have browned most of the steel, except for the lock itself, and now we're going to do our best to make the lock functional. Uh, right now, it's not. This is a kit gun, and all the components of the lock are, in fact, there and assembled. But, pulling... The trigger will not drop the hammer. We're starting to see a couple of possible things wrong here and a couple of ways to correct it. This arm here actually should be in contact with the trigger or somewhere very near. So when the trigger is pulled, pressure is applied upward on this piece which should release the sear here and allow the gun to fire. Well, a couple of things are not happening. One is the trigger when it's pulled back is binding right here on this portion of the trigger itself and is not allowing this part of the trigger mechanism to actually contact the sear or come anywhere in the region of the close. So, one solution is to actually remove some from the trigger right here so that it will go back further and actually make contact with the sear and do its job. So that's a possible solution. Because that's not very much clearance through this hole at all. Only, oh, barely an eighth of an inch. So we need more than that. You can see the, dis the, you can see the difference between the trigger bar here and the lock plate itself. And the part of the trigger that's supposed to contact with it is down here somewhere. Fla, 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 waving in the breeze. Hmm. What we have devised is a little olive wood shim here that will actually fit inside the hole, take up the extra space between the sear bar and the top of the trigger and transfer the pressure. And if this works, then we'll make it out of metal. We've used our little wood shim here as a pattern. So we have actually shaped a piece of metal and put in there instead a piece of scrap steel. So now we'll see if we can actually drop the hammer here. Yes. Okay. So mission accomplished on that score. For shooting Bon Richard, I'm going to be building up a target frame that'll hold a 30-inch sheet of paper. 
And I found this scrap in the Dempsey dumpster. And this is a 2x4 that somebody's already cut. So I went ahead and utilized it and I just pre-drilled some holes. Because this is hard seasoned wood. And to drive a nail straight through that would be, well, almost impossible I think. So uh, we went ahead and sighted the holes for the uprights. And I'll make those out of spruce. In making our target frame, we are, we've taken this board and we've already shortened it. And we've cut it to uh, just about the length of our base. And now we're going to rip it on our saw. I've clamped the pieces on the workbench there so I can drive those nails more or less straight down into the vertical pieces of the wood. Okay, those are set. And now we'll do the opposite side. We're now setting the top nails. Okay, that's good. To give our rectangular frame some added stability, we're going to reinforce the corners. And what I'm using here is some lad that I just cut from the same board of spruce. And some sheetrock nails here. So we're going to put some, a few cross braces there. And that would add some stability to the entire structure. Since we have these cut off pieces of spruce, we're going to attach bases to this frame. Now you'll note that this is purposefully flush with this edge. And the reason for this is because the target face will go on this side. And you want to be able to lay this flat down on the ground so you can attach your paper. If you put it here, then it would be at an angle and make things more awkward to nail your paper or cardboard or whatever uh, to the frame. So we're free drilling our holes. and then setting the nails. Okay, that's solid enough. That's not going anywhere. And there we have a target frame for muzzle loaders or anything else. Now you don't need to do fine cabinetry for a target frame, so yes, I've got splits in the woods at regular blah 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 blah, but it'll hold a sheet of paper that I can shoot holes in. And that's what's significant. Before I put on my pile of protective gear, I need to talk to you about wad cutters. When I shoot 14 gauge guns, I pre-cut wads for them and I load the equivalent of a shotgun shell in a muzzle loading gun. In the sense that I use an overpowder wad, cushion wads, uh, plastic wads, 
uh, protective wads for the bore when I use heavy shot and so, so I get maximum results from each shot. Because I want to kill game effectively, I don't want to use an authentic load and wound a bunch of game. I want to kill what I shoot at. So, we've already cut some cushion wads. And what I did was to take a section of cutoff barrel here and then trim it and sharpen it. Now this did wood as long as I used the just sharpened end of the barrel. I also tried to make something I could chuck up in a drill so I could cut paper wads. And I played around with this for a while in two different places and made actually two of these, neither of which worked. So we're back to the old standard and I'm going to sharpen up this edge so I can cut some wads out of thinner styrofoam. Now as it turns out, all the styrofoam I'm using is, happens to be the same aqua color. There's nothing special about that color and the quality of the styrofoam. A styrofoam can be any colors. They use it aqua because it looks a little better than, uh, say, cow dung or chicken droppings, which would be more authentic on a chicken carton. After all, uh, chicken droppings and a few feathers and a little blood, and yeah, yeah, it'd be authentic, all right. But it wouldn't be, <laughs> it wouldn't look very good on the shelves, and they'd probably not sell near as many eggs. They did that, so that's obviously the reason they make it attractive colors. But again nothing whatsoever to do with the composition or its usefulness. So we're going to go ahead and get dressed up and put another edge on this and use this to cut some thinner wads from my egg crate carton material. This punch will now cut a uh, perfect 14 gauge thin wads, but this is soft metal and this edge will roll and so every 10 wads or so you need to touch it up with a Dremel too. And right now as you can see it's doing just fine. There we go. Well, what started off with lock work with Von Richard has morphed into putting things together that I need to target the gun, such as making the wad cutter and the target frame itself. So next, coming up, will be the actual shooting. Yeah! Something y'all have all been waiting for. Yeah, we're going to do it tomorrow. Yes, we are. For now, this is Hovey Smith, reminding you to hunt what you eat and eat what you hunt. Be legal, be ethical, be safe, goodbye, God bless, and see you next time. I'm taking a cautious approach in regards to doing anything with this lock. A resist the guy impulse to go ahead and take it apart and do stuff to it? Don't, until you have identified some particular problem that needs to be corrected. Now, heating the lock for applying the browning is probably okay, but heating it to the point of case hardening may warp that lock plate and throw everything out of adjustment. I'm going to be shooting the gun with shot and ball loads during the next episode, which will be followed by small game, hog, and ultimately deer hunting. For more information about my books, blogs, and more than 825 videos, go to www.hoviesmith.com. To find out how to raise money right now from your own businesses, go to createyourownjobsecurity.com. To discover what my new novel, screenplay, and movie is all about, go to fatherthegrooms.net. Good hunting and good eating from the outdoors. Goodbye and God bless.